Let's get right into it tonight. Closing arguments in the trial of Christian Bahena Rivera. Local 5's John Diaz joins us from the courthouse in Davenport. John jurors started deliberations today shortly after arguments wrapped. The 12 jurors left a little while ago and are set to return tomorrow morning. Yeah, that's right, Stephanie. They have their instructions from the judge. They have heard from the attorneys from both sides who have each made their case as to why Bahena Rivera should either be set free or found guilty. The prosecution saying you got to follow the evidence here, but the defense saying there's not enough evidence to convict. The day started with prosecutors calling a rebuttal witness, hoping to put to rest whether Molly's boyfriend could have committed the crime. Have a couple beers, play bags, and then usually go to bed decent time so we can get up, work a good day tomorrow. And did you do that on July 18th of 2018? Yes. And was Dalton Jack present for the grilling? Yes. Then prosecutor Scott Brown delivering his closing remarks to the jury. This is Molly Tibbetts. 20 years old, just starting out her adult life. Brown speaking for about an hour, making his case that the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Christian Bahena Rivera is guilty of first degree murder. She crossed paths with him and it ended her life. Brown going back to the three keys to the state's case, the defendant's car, Molly's blood found inside, and the interview with police. There weren't two other guys. That's a figment of his imagination. All of the credible evidence in this case, all of it points at him. Defense attorney Chad Freeze asking the jury to deliver justice. Molly Tibbs deserves justice, but so does Christian Behena. He deserves justice. And your job is to find the truth, judge the facts, and do justice. Freeze picking apart the investigation of the case. But like Agent Villada said, within five to seven days, he had to quote, unlimited resources of the federal government with the FBI. Think about that. From the evidence that was either not collected or never submitted to the crime lab to the inexperience of the investigators. The evidence we do have about Christian Bahena is that he's not an angry man, that he's not violent. The case in the hands of five women and seven men who make up the jury. And we should mention that the jury will be back here tomorrow morning at 8.30. Three of three women from the pool of 15 jurors were sent home, selected as alternates. They won't be back unless they are needed. We're live in Davenport. John Diaz, Local 5 News. We are Iowa. All right, John, thank you. And Bahena Rivera is charged with first degree murder, but it's possible the jury could find him guilty of a lesser charge. So Local 5's Lake and McGee breaks those down. If the jury finds Bahena Rivera guilty of first degree murder and Molly Tibbetts death, he could face life in prison. That's according to the Polk County Attorney's website. Second degree murder is similar to first degree, but has no premeditation component to it. If convicted of that, Bahena Rivera would face a max of 50 years in prison and would be eligible for parole before serving his full sentence. And then there's voluntary and involuntary manslaughter. Iowa code classifies voluntary manslaughter as a sudden act, like an act of violence brought on by a person killed, and involuntary manslaughter essentially an accidental killing. The Feld Law Firm says voluntary could carry a prison term of 10 years and involuntary manslaughter a term of five years. I'm Lake McGee, Local 5 News, We Are Iowa. Well, joining us now is Emily Hughes, Professor and Associate Dean for Academic Affairs at the University of Iowa's College of Law. Professor Hughes, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thanks for having me. Well, we heard closing arguments today in the Bahena Rivera trial. First of all, we want to get your take on those from both the prosecution and the defense. Do you think the arguments that they both made were clear for the jury? I do think they were clear for the jury. I think both both sides really set out their arguments as best they could. Um, the prosecution, you know, started with the story of what happened, which is, you know, uh, Molly was out jogging and, and she was killed and really grew from that story, built on that story and wove in the evidence. The defense started with they closed a case, but they didn't solve a case and then sort of constructed his argument around that theory. 
Okay, so now that the, the jury will be deliberating this case, it's a, it's a big task that they have. What can they and can't they take into consideration? So everything they heard, they can take into consideration. Everything that came into evidence is fair game for them. Interestingly, there was a moment in the defense's closing argument where he accidentally put up something that had not come into evidence. And so they quickly took that down and that was solved. But the jury can't, if they looked at that at all, even for a moment, they cannot take that into consideration. But besides that one you know, little misstep, everything that came in, in in the trial is fair game. And they will be pouring through that very carefully, I imagine. Now, we did hear the judge today tell the jury it's not their jobs to worry about the repercussions from the decision. That's something we saw during the jury, the jury from the Marvin Esquivel Lopez trial, which happened last month. That led to a mistrial. So do jurors often worry about repercussions from their decisions? So it's, it's totally natural, human nature, to want to know what's going to happen to the person if we find him guilty of first degree murder or all the way down to involuntary manslaughter. I think that's human nature to want to know what's going to happen next. Uh, so the instruction to specifically tell them not to do that is to try to foreclose, I think, what's really human nature, which is wondering what's going to happen next. Okay. And from your take, any moments that really stood out as unusual or interesting in this trial? So, well, I, in terms of the closing arguments today, uh, I thought the defense made, a, you know, the defense's strategy was not only sort of the surprise testimony that came up yesterday and when the defendant took the stand, which is two people came and essentially, you know, kidnapped him and made him do it, is, or, you know, made him go with them. But um, in addition to that theory, the defense sort of laid out a bunch of other theories, almost, uh, you know, making sure that they had covered all their bases, whether that's a, a helpful strategy or not a helpful strategy, people would disagree on that. Um, some people would think it is, some people would think it's not, but that was certainly their strategy. In terms of the prosecution, uh, you know, there weren't really any surprises. It was a very well-constructed, um, tight closing of, we've got video evidence. You know, the, the video that broke the case is what the, the prosecution kept coming back to. The video of the Malibu driving by after you sort of see the shadow of Molly jogging. Um, the video that broke the case, the defendant's interview, or the prosecution would call it the confession, the defense would call it the interview, and then the physical evidence, walking through the physical evidence. Um, and the defense did what they could with that. You know, there is a lot of physical evidence here. And turned in, the worst fact for the defense is that he took them to the cornfield. And, and that's a really hard fact to get over. Um, but they did what they could. And, and it'll be interesting to see what the jury does with what, everything that they have heard. Absolutely. Professor Emily Hughes, we want to thank you so much for your time today and giving us just a little insight and some clarification on this trial. Thank you so much for having me. And if you missed any part of the Christian Bahena Rivera trial, you can catch up at weareiowa.com. There's a section on our website dedicated to just this story, or you can rewatch it all on our YouTube channel. Search We Are Iowa or Local 5 News.